Uh, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Nina. Hi, mom and dad. <laughs> um, Okay, really quickly, I uh, did a year at Art Academy, then I went to university and I really studied uh, geoinformation science and now I became a web cartographer. So really quickly about myself. I work at WebMapper, uh, which is a really small uh, company in Utrecht, the Netherlands. Uh, we make uh, geo web visualizations. We combine data design and technology. Um, yeah, we do everything open source. Uh, we use a lot of open data and uh, well, I think that's it. So this presentation, I'm just going to show you some really cool maps uh, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to make creative things with uh, vector tiles. I'm going to do that, showing you four map examples, uh, these four. And about those maps, uh, they're made by me, so uh, I did all the creative things on that. Uh, I, use it, I use Mapbox GL, so I'm not going to elaborate on that. Um, our tiles come from Cartico, which is a vector tile stack that we build ourselves uh, later on that as well. And I make all my fonts and sprites myself. And that's also, uh, if you use your own tiles and your own font sprites, you don't need anything hosted on Mapbox, so no access tokens needed there. Uh, if you want to follow along, there's a lot of links in this presentation to tools and stuff I use. So you can check my slides and click on everything. And uh. The first map I wanted to show you is a map uh, called Paradise in the Polder. It's a really artistic map I made. Um, and I wanted to start out with the first step takeaway uh, is uh, when you want to make a creative map, you have to know your tiling scheme. So you have to know what are you working with to make a uh, it's easier for yourself to experiment with the creative part. Um, so we built Cartico, uh, this is our tiling scheme. It's a consistent style stack, accurate, simple, it works fast. And um, uh, it has really an easy, understandable layers and naming. And um, my colleague is gonna talk on that later today at 11.20 in this room, and he's gonna explain all about the stack. So if you wanna know more about this, then check that out. I'm just gonna show nice pictures. <laughs> Um, I always code my map, so I do everything in my text editor. That's also uh, uh, what I wanted to show you. I have a little code example, so I really hope that this will work. Um, you see my map and you see uh, the style JSON actually. And uh, the fun thing is that if you have a really easy stack, like now I just made everything green, which is natural, I could just change it into, for example, agricultural. And it changes to everything which is agricultural. So uh, I like this, that you can just really easy names to style. Next step. I'm just going to code that uh, and unlock this part. So what I did, I took the natural layer. And instead of filling my polygons, I took a little icon and I put it on the lines. And it just randomly uh, renders uh, this icon on my lines. And you get this really cool effect. And I just love coding stuff because I can just copy my things. And I can add it in. And I have to give it like a different name because that's. And then we're going to do the same for the agricultural. Yeah, well, that's coding, no? <laughs> and let's just give it a different opacity and uh, maybe like the icon size could go up a bit. And you get a whole combination between uh, the nature and the agricultural dots. It's rendering a little bit weird. Maybe it's too big. Let's just make it six. So having a easy, understandable tile set with coding your own map uh, makes it possible to create really creative stuff in a fast way and also just play around with it a lot. So the next takeaway is like a polygon doesn't have to be a polygon. That was one thing that I discovered when I was making this map. I use a little fill symbol on the lines instead of filling my polygon. And I think that's also something that uh, I really just discovered for myself. Oh, I don't have to style a line as a line or a point as a point. You can do other stuff with it as well. And that also brings me to the next thing. Uh, use sprites. So the little green icon is a sprite. And... Oh. 
I'm going to show you that with the next map, which I made completely out of sprites. Uh, they take me to 1943. Uh, so what is a sprite? Mapbox GL works with sprites. It's a build up out of two files. You always have a sprite JSON and a sprite PNG. And check out the Mapbox pack about it. And there are some tools and tutorials on how to make icon sprites. So you can turn your SVGs with uh, sprite zero into a sprite. Uh, so that's also what is normally used for. So this is one of the sprites from my box and it's used for making these icons. But you can also use this not only for icons but for fills, for symbols, for background patterns, uh, a lot more and that gives you the ability to do this like visual effects uh, in your map. But then you will have to make them by hand. So uh, this is the map. Uh, check it out. It's from the whole Netherlands, and it's completely made out of these sprites. Internet's a bit slow. So this is a sprite JSON, for example. Um, you can look at the spec from Mebox. Uh, you give your little uh, a picture a name. Uh, you say how much pixels width and height it is, and then at which x and y coordinates in your picture, the smaller picture is. My sprite PNG I make with GIMP, uh, which is alternative uh, open source alternative Photoshop. And I always like to start out with a blank canvas and I just paste everything I want to use in my map design onto that canvas. And then I'm finding the coordinates with the pointer dialog, which is a, a panel in GIMP and you can just use it. You draw a little box and you get the X and Y position and the width and height and pixels. And I add that manually in my text editor into the, uh, the JSON. So, um, and then I exp export my uh, canvas as a PNG, of course. Give it the same name, and it works. So for this map, this was my inspiration. There are like uh, war maps from 1943, and I really love that map, so we tried to remake it with the modern data. Um, but I noticed it has a legend, and actually this legend is so cool, because all the little roads uh, are sprites by themselves, I thought. So what did I do? I just copied the legend, and I went to use this one as my sprite. So uh, this is in GIMP. I just zoomed in, and I just made a little square about which part I wanted to use for the road. Um, I cleaned it a little bit up, because the picture was not that uh, sharp, so you can see I, I cleaned it and I just used a little bit of that. And um, if you want to check out those files, it's also, I, I call them legend.png, so if you open up the application and you look at the behind what you're going to get, you get the legend as well. Um, yeah, this is a sprite that I made for another map, for the, for the previous map, actually I'm only using the green icon now, but I just throw a lot of experiments and stuff in there and uh, try to play with my map design. This is a sprite for another map you're going to see soon. So that takes me to the next tip. Uh, if you know your technology, you know how things work, you can change it and you can change the defaults. And that's always what I tell if people ask me, like, how do you make those beautiful maps? It's like change the defaults. Change whatever you can, just make it slightly different than the defaults are, and, and you, you'll get there pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, the next map I wanted to show, uh, we made this map for a customer a liberation map. Um, and what I really wanted to do once is have those like random hand-drawn uh, coastline effect that you see in the old maps and there's like this really nice blurry edge around all the coastlines. And it's actually really, really hard to render this with the data that we have with any kind of vector tile data out there. So uh, that was my challenge and it's not working. <sighs> there's supposed to be a map here. It did work before. Huh? Well, let's give it a second. Oh no. This is really cool, the, that map. So <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, if, if it's not working, just uh, try it at home. I'm also afraid to change the defo the, to, to reload because I'm not sure. Just continue. If people can't see this up. Oh, I clicked somewhere. I'm sorry. <laughs> People, you can you can check it out at home. Oh my God. Okay, I'll, I'll just quickly explain because you can see it in the background. Uh, what I did. Um, I'm just gonna stand here. It's not that clear on this one either. 
So there are actually three coastlines uh, with three different colors in the back. Um, it's really, really hard to render these lines with blur and opacity because you get all kind of really weird render effects, uh, artifacts that, that have spikes and shit that overlaps each other and it's ugly. But I found out eventually that it was just do not put too much opacity, just a really little bit of a blur and three colors. And then I put those dots on top of it and it kind of mixed because your mind uh, just makes it blurry by itself. So putting those dots on top of the coastline layers uh, made a visual uh, blend uh, uh, on, the, on the coastlines. So if you check it out uh, for yourself, it's also the, the codes are, you can, See, uh, see for yourself, play with it, it's really fun. So um, that's one of the tools I used, a color blender tool. I really love this tool, it's an online tool you can throw in two colors and it blends. And uh, that's also what I did for the coastline. So I, I, I picked some colors blending the blue uh, to, the, to the land color. And visually combine those layers. So uh, also my dots were kind of an accident. So <laughs> I really like the hiff. Uh, uh, putting those dots on top just give a visual blend. And I think that's also the power that if you combine more transparent sprites and layers, you can create awesome stuff. Um, that's also what I do. So in Mapbox, you, ha you can create a background layer, which is just covered. Oh God, five minutes. Uh, which covers your whole map. And uh, I use this a lot also on top. So I have a transparent texture with like a grain, a paper grain, and I just put it on top. So uh, check out transparenttextures.com. They have a lot of really awesome uh, uh, textures you can download. I'm gonna move fast and my sample's not working anyway. Last map, the crafty map. I really hope that the balloon is going to work. So what comes after styling is interactivity with JavaScript, which is so fun. Uh, this is CSS. Um, <laughs> uh, so combine those li libraries. And what I, for example, use is Turf, which gives you the ability to do some geospatial analysis in your browser. And I'm creating random dots with Turf. I'm, I'm asking my, my map bounds and uh, creating a layer and then inserting it into my style. And the balloons are not working. Okay, I'm just gonna refresh because I hate this. This is control error. No, stay on page. <sighs> They're supposed to be mapped with hot, random hot air balloons. You can go to it yourself and then you can put the slider and you can go up to a thousand air balloons on your map. Yeah, okay, I'll continue. We'll go back, check it later. Anyway, then also the little air balloon is in the sprite already. Oh, I hate this. Uh, use those map events and it's really fun. And I also did it in this map. So there is a coffee stain. Uh, I think it's here. Yeah. So every time, so now it stays in one spot. So every time the point goes outside the screen, it's going to be redrawn somewhere else. I think now it's here. So uh, it's, it's a really, really small thing, but I think it adds to the feeling of having an old map. And uh, it's a nice search every time. Ah, it's right in the middle now. You can never get rid of it. Oh. Anyway, it's also in this legend. See, I added it there. <laughs> So this is the code, check it out. I'm gonna go more fun. Okay, so really, really fun, but I had also this question like, I can't read this label where I'm reading classes and you can use the same technology to do something useful with it. So here's supposed to be a map and you can increase the font size. So it scans your whole style and takes all the text layers and just increases the font size. So you can drag this number up and down, check it out yourself. Ah, oh, it's horrible, it's not working. So making a good map is more than designing the map. It goes beyond use JavaScript libraries, add stuff on top of it. How much time? Because I have a little bit extra. I just made this last week and I wanted, and then this one is working. So um, <laughs> I was playing around with Mapbox GL and I tried, oh, uh, CSS blend modes is awesome. So here I used the CSS blend mode on the Mapbox GL map and it actually works. And uh, I love the effect, and I even if you press L, you can uh, just 
play around and it, it's there's different blend modes on the map different blend, blend modes on the circles and also different blend mode between the circles and yeah i love it you play around with it press press the l on the keyboard and then you can do the bubbles <laughs> and don't know what, don't ask me what the l is for um <laughs> So that was the last takeaway. Go even further and use also maybe like CSS, be creative. And uh, we have knowledge, we have technology, you can have a lot of experience, but making a nice image in the end just really comes down to the creativity and just love this one. Um, okay, okay, I'm done. So this was my presentation. I made it with Reveal, Idil, Mapbox, React MapGL, Code Sandbox, everything. Everything's built on top of Kartico. Check out the presentation of my colleague later on today. Um, check out me if you want to see what I do, see more maps that I made. Uh, you can follow me everywhere online. And, um, okay, questions. I'm sorry that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yes, it's, it's loaded. <laughs> so we can increase and you do have to like reload it. And it just makes like new balloons every time. And It's awesome. So, you want more balloons? Uh? <laughs> oh, let's, okay. Yeah, awesome. So thanks, Nina. Thank you for a map full of hot air. And uh, I want to ask you, can you please put the URL when people can try this at home? Because I know that uh, we only have the video, and I think lots of people watching this from home uh, want to see this on their screen. So thank you very much. And now I think we're open for questions for a few minutes. I'm gonna fold, fold. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah. Um, on the one of your screenshots, I saw that you populated the um build up area with little houses yeah yeah do you have that code somewhere as well yeah so all the maps uh, there is the github link and the code box link so you can check all the styles out there all online and also the sprite so you can steal it use it <laughs> any other questions any more questions Super nice presentation, thank you, despite all the problems. And <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you if you ever, like I personally uh, totally agree with you, creativity is awesome and I think we're like, um, like we should try to, like there's the software part and like technical part and then there's the creativity and I think when these two meet then it's really amazing. And I wanted to ask you if you ever had like 3D projects because I work a lot in 3D and I do a lot of creative stuff in 3D and I, I was just curious if you guys ever had this or you just stick to the 2D land with your projects at your company. Um, so real 3D no, but I did do like in the Mapbox DL can do the extrusion. So I made a map of all the buildings in the Netherlands that are extruded on their heights. So it, that's, I think, two and a half D uh, officially, but people think it's 3D. Um, yeah, I think that's in the, in the background of the, this one. Yeah. So yeah, 3D, no, but I would love to, to experiment with that, but I have to learn, learn more. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we still have a tiny amount of time for one more question. Uh, it's not a buzzer, it's more a comment than a question. I have friends at the France National Geographic Institute who are working on recreate uh, the Cassini's map from the 17th century. And I think when they will show your presentation, they will get so pissed. <laughs> 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 because they, they try to reproduce it the uh, old way. So we have maps and objects in the databases and they run their stuff. And you do it <laughs> so casually and say, okay, I take that and let's do sprites. I think we, we will get so pissed, say, oh shit, we don't think about that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can come help you out. Just, uh. I want to make a very quick question of my own. Yeah? If you could meet your special people who make this kind of visualization frameworks, like Mapbox, uh, OpenLayers, Leaflet, and so, or B3, and ask for one feature 
what would that feature be? What Ooh. what feature technically are you missing that you think could make could squeeze into more hot air? <laughs> so I think what would be easier like now we can just upload one sprite image and I would love it if you could just add multiple. So I don't sometimes I want to reuse stuff from previous sprites that I made and then I have to do all the gimp and, and manual editing again so that might make it easier. And so last week I was experimenting with the CSS blend mode, so it would be awesome if we could put the blend mode on layers and not because this was on the whole map, uh, and you cannot do it on a layer. That would be, that would be awesome. We could make funny stuff. So thank you very much, Nina. You're welcome.